Welcome to the second video in a series of video about making educational videos, just really with your phone at first at least. And the kind of first video was about the basics, so just getting the light right, getting the sound right, and also making sure the camera is nice and steady. Then this video is going to be about editing. I'm going to show you how to edit videos on your phone. And the app that I use in this video is Kinemaster, but really this is about editing in general. And how do you edit videos to make sure that they are worth watching, make sure they're engaging for your students. That's coming up. Video editing comes down to about five different processes and the same no matter what software you use. There might be a different order for different software, but this is my workflow for Kinemaster. So first of all it's about assembly, so I'm just going to chuck all my clips in. Then I actually sort out the sound and the colour there first because I don't need to then do that once I've cut it up. So I'm looking for the sound being the right level and I'm looking for colours not being too kind of gaudy and uh, natural kind of colours. Then I'm going to do the cutting, I'm just going to look for bits that I don't want, pauses, ums and errs that we don't really need to be seeing when we're watching a video that kind of interrupt our flow. Then you're going to go ahead and do titles which are words on the screen, pictures, maybe maybe even videos sort of a graphics and maybe sounds so maybe you want some music or maybe you want some sounds that make a title just pop like that. And then it's important to get the export right because if you're going to upload to YouTube or share it you need to export it as a video that every other machine in the world can see. So we're going to jump into the screen capture mode and I'll explain to you, I'll take you through my workflow. This video is a really quick video I made for five things that students should check at the end of GCSE physics exams. Create a new project, find the files in the media browser in whatever folder they're in on your phone and just put them into the timeline. This is a really simple video in that there's just really one clip but I'm still going to cut and put my little intro, my little gorilla intro just in here. Assembly then is just about putting the things into the correct sequence in the timeline. I'm not really going to correct my colour because I'm kind of happy with the colours that the phone gives me. But I am going to fix my audio and I always find that sound comes out a little bit too quiet so I'm going to boost the volume slightly and I'm going to apply a compressor. And a compressor is what makes your voice sound like it might on a broadcast. Okay, so if you've got that option, always do. And you're just looking at the sliders on the left hand side there which are the level indicator for the mic. You want them generally hanging about the green and the orange and yellow but never really the red. That's when it's going to start popping. Then I'm just going to start cutting and you really want to cut out as much as possible. You really want to make your videos as short and snappy as possible. So if you said something that was not really relevant, then cut it. If you said something that you could do without, just cut it. If you paused and you ummed and ahed, just cut it. To cut parts of the timeline, you just use the playhead. The playhead is the position of the video that you're looking at at that moment. You move that around, decide where you want to make the cut, and then you, yeah, you use the little pair of scissors from the little drop down menu. There are different ways that you can cut and trim your clips though. You can just use the scissors and you can split the video at the playhead and that just means it splits it literally into two clips and you can delete the ones that you don't want. Or you can trim to the left or trim to the right of your playhead and that will just clip off the end or clip off the start of the clip that you're interested in. Once I've been through the whole thing and I'm happy with the way that it plays and I want to get that right first time because I don't want to have to go and do those cuts later and other things will be moving around, I'm going to go through and add titles and graphics or any video in video that I want to show. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my first title and I'm going to make it in all the different ways that um, I like my titles to look. So I change the font to look like a kind of handwritten font, I change the colour to match the colours of my channel, I do a background, I do an um, outline and I kind of try and get it to look as good as I can with maybe a little pop in animation, maybe a little fade out animation. I take my time over the first one because then I can just duplicate that and change it over and over again. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a little title over my intro, um, my little intro clip, which is going to be a slightly shortened, shortened version but it's the same basic text and I just move it and change the words from that duplicated clip. So I go all the way through my video now and I just put numbers on them and I just put a little title to indicate here's a new thing, here's something you should be interested in, here's the next kind of um, tip that I'm going to give you. Titles and pictures and picture in picture video are really useful for keeping people engaged. This is where you're going to use your excellent PowerPoint skills. So at this point just think to yourself, well what else do they need to see to keep them engaged? What else do they need to read to make sure they can spell those words to write them in their exam questions for example? And then at the end of my videos I'll always just try, like to add a little call to action which tells people subscribe to my channel and share this video because that's one of the ways in which your videos are going to get discovered. 
Sound is incredibly important for videos. I've taken to putting background music onto all my videos at the minute because I think that it gives it a bit of pace and I think it gives it a bit of enjoyment and I think that it kind of brings people through the video. But don't add things that are going to be distracting. It might just be that some of your text you want to emphasize and you just want a little bit of a pop when that text appears. I suggest you steer clear of using copyrighted music because artists are very good or rather their publishers are very good at finding that copyrighted music and claiming it and you don't really want them to be claiming your video so although your video will still possibly be live on YouTube it could not belong to you because somebody's claimed it for they own the copyright to the soundtrack so therefore they own the rights to this video and then you wouldn't be able to do things like monetize it so just be aware of that you can find lots and lots of free music actually on YouTube they have a free music library that you can download and add to your videos lots of the apps have their own little um, libraries of music as well and also sound effects and everything like that so you can get away with just what's already in the apps then you're just going to want to export and upload your file. 1080p will be good enough resolution just for YouTube and 4K is a bit overkill really. 25 frames per second or 30 frames per second is absolutely fine depending on what your camera does. Export it and then you can upload it. So that was the second in this mini series of videos. The first one is about the basics of, of shooting videos with your phone. This one was about editing videos on your phone. Then we're going to talk about the flow and kind of structure and format of educational videos so that they're understandable, so they're most useful. Then we're going to talk about building an audience and using search engine optimization. That's video four. Also then we're going to talk about more creative things that you can do if you've got maybe a little bit of money to spend and you've got a bit more time to invest. Then we're going to talk about making a channel and a brand. My channel is Guerrilla Physics and that's hopefully something that people are going to recognize um, more often when they come across videos that they're looking for on the internet. And then we're going to talk about types of videos and some other types of videos other than this, which is just a kind of standard, what we call a talking head kind of video. Straight. <laughs> Stay tuned because Guerrilla Physics is all about you understanding your physics, understanding education more so that you're more confident so that you take more risks and get yourself out there and, and help out more students and then they will do better in their exams. Right, thank you very much for watching.